Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. I am sitting down to finally do part two of the girl talk. I basically asked you questions on Instagram and I was meaning to answer them. I did half of those questions in another video which I'll link for you here and I'm just doing part two of that. First question is how to stay consistent on your deen. I think it's really important to keep yourself connected to the people who constantly remind you of your deen because as a human it's really easy to get distracted especially nowadays. Social media, internet is like so easily accessible you can literally do things that are not like correct islamically super easily so the only way that i find helps me stay connected is by staying connected to things and people and places that remind me of my lord but basically is consistently visiting the mosque following accounts on social media that talk about god listening to reminders you know following people who are who talk about god reminders will constantly come up and will help you stay connected my fiance is feeling shy he, d he lives in the uk but he's shy to talk to me he i want to talk to them and clear out the awkwardness very common and normal for somebody to feel shy especially if they haven't spoken to you before don't let that get to you text every now and then i guess if you want see how they react or respond like after a while once the, once you've texted a few times they'll feel comfortable it might be easier to give them a call of course hopefully you're doing all of this with the permission of your parents you don't want to be doing these things without telling them it becomes a problem in the family of course considering that he's your cousin as well i think calling might be helpful because then you're able to like get your answers or to speak to them properly like one to one but to have sabr i want to marry someone but my parents said they'll think about it but they still want to have a look with rishta rishta uncles too i think perform is the khara that will guide you see where that takes you if it comes out right then like speak to your parents and be like i performed is the khara and it came out right so i think this is the right decision speak to somebody who is older than your parents so it could be like or somebody that is more convincing than you are and i find that between us siblings even if i spoke to my sister like younger sister and she spoke to my parents she's more likely to convey the message in an understanding way than i am because i, I get triggered really quickly i find that a person who's able to convey your message in an understanding way rather than like making it a scene how to not worry about future and also people saying people's like you know saying weird things by not focusing on those things because i feel like you can't you can't ever control people but you can control your own thoughts and how you take that information so if somebody keeps saying like you know you're not hard working you know if you're hard working or not if you are hard working it doesn't matter what they say you can't like make them quiet but you can make those thoughts quiet in your mind and tell yourself that it doesn't matter what they say because you know who you are and the kind of a person you are so just ignore them really that's what i would do steps to acca i'm going to be doing another video talking about acca this week actually so you should see a video very very soon i'll answer this question there how to manage finances <sighs> honestly nowadays things are so expensive everything is so expensive one person cannot afford to manage finances um as you said you're the oldest daughter even if you are working you will need help from other people you need help from your you know other siblings and your parents everybody needs to work together and that's how households work nowadays it's not like olden days where one person used to work and everybody used to just stay at home and, and that was enough for everyone to survive nowadays things are so different and everything is so expensive and so managing finances you have to first make sure that there's enough people working that's not a possibility then with your money that you're earning you have to try and like make sure you're prioritizing things that are important and spend it on those and not on every other thing that is not necessary which i'm sure you don't do but you know sometimes we can get distracted I started wearing a hijab and now i'm scared because what if my husband doesn't like it how many girls nowadays wear hijab on their weddings and that's such a big change and such a good change alhamdulillah before getting married to you is <laughs> telling you to not wear a hijab should you even be marrying them i don't think you should personally because they don't understand islam they're making you not like forcing you to not do your fard they're ruining your akhira they're not good good for you if somebody is messing up with your deen uh, i personally would not marry them tons of people who would prefer you wearing a hijab or even advise wearing a hijab because of course it's something that is ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how much should we care about looks while choosing a spouse uh looks over personality if you ask me personally if you asked me this question like five years ago i would have said both of them are equally important but now have being married two years 
nothing matters just the character matters if the if your spouse is not there for you on your difficult days honestly the beauty just multiplies by zero nobody cares how good looking they are whether that's a man or a woman beauty has nothing to do with your marriage honestly for your marriage to survive you just have to be really understanding of each other's trigger points <laughs> understand what makes things bad for you in a marriage have a good character be a caring person that's all that matters for me. obviously it's an opinion I don't think looks are important but of course attraction is important action comes with character if you like if you're sitting down and you're really really sick and your spouse whether that's a male or a female comes and looks after you and makes you feel special of course the attraction is going to start building quite subjective but that's my opinion is it okay to marry early in your 20s it's okay to get married whenever you want whenever you feel ready as long as you're past the age of <laughs> legally getting married there's no rule to it if you find somebody at the age of 20 and you think they are the one for you and you perform istikhara you go for it honestly how to talk to your partner partner during the initial days of your relationship before marriage how i think it's difficult to say how but initially it will be awkward and weird and you don't know what to talk about you just start with like normal like day-to-day -day conversation how are you how was your day what are your likes and dislikes and some of the questions that i've already discussed and you can show your intention that you know the intention is to get to know you so ask me questions i'll ask you questions so we get to know each other and yeah that's how you kind of start talking um of course with the permission of your parents i just want to mention that best advice for young girls getting married i think my best best advice that you'll has helped me the most is just being myself when getting married so for me i'm my social battery runs out really really quickly so for me if i pretended to be a, a social bee and i was like very talkative and you know as somebody who's always ready to talk and willing to mingle i would struggle right now but from the start like i was just myself like in the times when i felt like talking i was talking and when i didn't feel like talking i was quiet you don't have to be rude of course that's not the point the point is to just be yourself and if like if you're going in your zone of not talking just express it from the start just be yourself don't try to impress them by being something that you think they might like you know don't change yourself because the change will be temporary and you'll struggle that's that's my tip that's something that i've done and has helped me a lot i'm married with a pakistani husband to save marriage how do i deal with him sending money back personally as long as your needs and responsibilities are being fulfilled obviously as a wife you're getting everything that you need if there is excessive money personally i don't think there's there's any issue in looking after your family back home especially your parents specifically your parents um everybody else obviously your their siblings and everyone else should be doing things for themselves and you shouldn't be doing you shouldn't be like sending money every month if that makes sense but if they are in need of it let's like say somebody's business isn't working or it's not growing and they just need that support then of course do that help them as a muslim as a good brother or sister but parents of course like if they need help if they need money you after fulfilling the responsibilities of your wife um, and if they are being fulfilled you shouldn't have an issue with it but if your responsibilities are not being fulfilled then of course it's a problem and you want to try and talk to them and discuss that you know i don't have an issue with you helping your family i think that you should first fulfill your responsibilities with your wife it's something that needs to be talked about something that needs to be discussed because you're not being evil if you're if he's fulfilling everything that you need personally um but if he's doing that yet you have an issue then i think it's there, that's something that you could work on i want to start hijab but the environment or the circumstances are not like that still do do the work for me i will make dua for you my advice is to start before it's too late we see so many people like may allah give you a long life but we see so many people leaving this dunya just thinking that i'll do it tomorrow i'll do it tomorrow i'll do it tomorrow i'll do it when the time is right but because you're thinking about it right now it means the time is right for you now unless one of is putting the thought in your head it is right it is the right time for you so do it should you accept somebody's proposal who's not stable uh, who doesn't have a lot of money but is a good muslim personally yes i as long as they're hard working and they know their responsibilities if they're a good muslim of course they would know their responsibilities that they are they need to be the breadwinner 
you know even if you earn money even if you work, do a job they have to be able to provide for you and for the rest of the family so if they know their responsibilities and they are willing to work hard to do that to provide for you yes i would accept the proposal i would say yes to that person but if you think they're lazy and they would just if you work as well and they they won't take up on their responsibilities then i i would doubt them being a good muslim and also them being a good partner uh, what to do when life feels like aimless and not know what to do i think a lot of us feel like that i feel like that all the time i was feeling like that in the morning it's very normal to feel like that on certain days on those days what i personally do is just basically connect myself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more sit down make dua you know cry my heart out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala think about all the blessings that I have and just make lots and lots of dua and it always helps clear like when you cry it helps lighten your heart and like I just think to myself that this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan for me I had a plan to do this and that I wanted my life to be a certain way but it's not that way it's going a different way which is basically Allah's way so you know those things really comfort me help me calm down is it okay if a boy has followed a bunch of unknown girls on Insta and says he's not involved in anything bad? No, not for me. <laughs> I don't think it's okay uh, because what's the need? Why are you doing it? Like, why is that a need? Especially if you're married, I, I don't see a need for it, you know. And if you're not doing anything bad, then doing them and not being in the following list shouldn't be a problem, you know. So for me... You shouldn't even have to say it like he should just out of like if you did that like if you had tons of men on your account even if you weren't involved would he be okay with that i don't know maybe speak to the person and be like you know i don't think it's a necessity i don't do it so you sh you, sh you shouldn't do it as well and it's creating unnecessary doubts and feelings in your heart and it, I'm, I'm sure they don't have any bad intentions but it's just unnecessary it's unnecessary drama unnecessary problem so just get rid of it honestly it's it doesn't add value to your life your relationship is more important than them random people so yeah how to deal with your husband's brother and his wife taunting you because you're a working woman by not letting it get to you you're working you're getting the money you're independent you're not dependent on anyone you have finance to support yourself if anything bad was to happen that's all that matters people can say whatever they want to we can never make people happy and as long as you remain respectful and be nice to them it's not it's none of their business to come and tell you what you should and shouldn't be doing it's only your husband's and your decision what you should do as a, as people as partners is ignore them and try to not let that get to me he says that they we're talking to a guy and they were in a haram relationship they're not talking right now but you, you can't stop thinking about him etc i heard this quote which might help you you leave something for allah believe that he will give you something better than you can imagine there's another one that you might be running after a rose and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might be planning a whole bouquet for you when you truly believe in those two things i think anything you can get through if you truly believe in that and you remind yourself of that there isn't a lack of people in this world if this person is good for you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put them back into your life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it you know halal so have true faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it was a haram relationship be very grateful that you're alive and you were able to take that decision for yourself and you're out of that relationship how would you adjust when your elder brother gets married it's a huge huge adjustment for sister as well it it is um of course a huge a huge adjustment because initially when they weren't married their whole attention was um yours and now they've got divided attention so it's it's a bit of a change i think my advice is to step back and think about you yourself that when you get married how would you like to be treated in that new family as a sister and this new person that's come into your life into your brother's life and your life um you want to treat them like you would want to be treated if you were to get married you know would you want that person space with your partner with your husband would you want the family of your husband to treat you nicely i'm sure you would so you kind of want to remind yourself of those things and they will bring you comfort and sukoon and that will make you a nicer kinder and more compromising person i think those are the majority of the questions that i needed to get through the rest of it is a bit more on the sides that i don't want to touch upon or the questions that i think 
I am not in a position to answer. A scholar should answer. So I'm not going to touch upon those. But the rest of it, I have kind of gone through. Hopefully, you found it to be useful. I will be doing these videos more regularly and will be answering more of your questions. So stay tuned. And I usually ask these questions over on Instagram. So, you know, go and give us a follow. Next time, take care of yourselves and just have lots and lots of trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Honestly, I'm going to leave you with this, that if you believe in him, even the biggest of problems, like if you think about your life, let's say that somebody passed away and they were very dear to you. If you, if you connect that incident to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you remind yourself that, you know, we're all to leave this dunya and they've left, left this dunya, of course it's heartbreaking. How can I help them? Reading duas for them, reading Quran for them, sending them the reward. You try to take everything positively and connect it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, life becomes that teeny bit easier. That's something that I'm going to leave you with. On that note, take care of yourselves and I will see you very, very soon, inshallah. Allah Hafiz.